HBO's newest take on Watchmen is one of the most anticipated television shows of 2019. Johnny just but one of the things that makes Watchmen different from the others is that it is the epitome of deconstructing genres at its core, especially a genre as large as the superhero. With this in mind, there's an incredibly similar deconstructionist example, but within an entirely different and very contrasting genre. Yes, there's a Watchmen-style take on Sailor Moon. Seriously? That's precisely what Madoka Magica is. Look at the evolution of any adventure genre. Kid stuff keeps evolving to intrigue older audiences. Not only is this an unavoidable progression, it's a healthy one. The psychologist Eric Erickson proposed a theory of development, the eight stages of man, which divides a lifespan into age-specific challenges. Perhaps it provides a useful analogy for the evolution of genres too. Whether you're looking at magical girl anime or superhero comics, the stories do generally seem to start with an earnest stage, then grow into phases of deconstruction, then reconstruction, and so on. But let's define deconstruction, which is a form of literary criticism derived from philosopher Jacques Derrida's writing. In brief, it's a style of critical reading that seeks to pick apart any text and show how its parts have contradictory meanings. Like, for instance, how stories intended as innocuous diversions for kids may actually contain challenging concepts for adults to ponder. Do Viewing genre as such reveals how series as seemingly disparate as Watchmen and Madoka Magica actually have similar ambitions. So this begs the question, should genres grow up? First, let's look at Watchmen. Serialized by DC Comics in 1986, Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons' Watchmen is a murder mystery confirming many upsetting suspicions about costume vigilantes. Sure, it can be enjoyed by general audiences, but it takes on more significance when appreciated in the history of its genre. At an early stage, the series was going to star superheroes from Charlton Comics, a company DC had recently acquired. Once editorial saw how their new purchases would be dirtied up, they suggested new characters being used instead, and the creators eagerly agreed. Thus, the comic is cast with analogs. So, Rorschach is inspired by The Question, Dr. Manhattan by Captain Atom, and Ozymandias by Peter Cannon Thunderbolt. Changing the cast freed Moore and Gibbons of restrictions, either to be bound by the Charlton hero's particulars or to refrain from plot lines that might damage them commercially. Like how some heroes might simply enjoy violence, or get off on dressing up in costume, or feel little connection to common citizens. The grandest point is wrapped in the title, which relates to a Latin saying, translated as, who watches the Watchmen? If the public trusts mighty champions to enforce morality, who's to say those champions are being moral themselves? or even have morals that align with the public's. Ozymandias is eventually unveiled as the murderer behind Watchmen's mystery. His scheme is to accomplish a feat that can never be written into an adventure serial, an end to all conflict. The open-ended nature of a monthly comic requires lessons to be continually forgotten, so heroes can keep fighting villains each episode. Freed of such requirements, Ozymandias can learn, seeing that reactive vigilantism doesn't affect change like, say, the proactive manipulation of governments can. I did it. He takes a Gordian Knot solution, I did it. resolving a seemingly unsolvable problem by approaching it outside the box. Does his vision of world peace not align with yours? Tough luck. The implicit message of superheroes is that might makes right. And Watchmen makes that explicit by stressing how Ozymandias has applied his might to make this decision for you. Do it! Magical Girl is an adventure genre that came about in Japan during the 60s. Just as superhero comics have, its manga and anime evolved to increasing levels of sophistication over the years. From the carefree shenanigans of Sally the Witch to the epic melodrama of Sailor Moon. The latter series, created by Naoko Takauchi in 1991, is the genre's icon. As such, it's invited deconstructions. In Sailor Moon, Usagi Tsukino is a normal high schooler who gains powers and a costumed alter ego when Luna, a talking cat, enlists her to an outfit of heroic, color-coded sailor soldiers. With parallels in place, screenwriter Jen Urobuchi uses his analogs to explore plots too extreme for Sailor Moon's publisher, so he has magical girls get brutally killed in combat with the horrific witches QB makes them fight. Then he reveals those witches are actually former magical girls, corrupted and mutated by their powers. Where'd that witch come from? That witch used to be Sayaka Miki. You saw, it happened right in front of you. The Talking Cat's deal is a Faustian one. Similar to Ozymandias' response to the tropes of serials, QB's revolving door of recruits is inspired by happenstance surrounding Sailor Moon's publishing. Prior to the series' debut, Takeuchi had essentially tried out a rough draft, codenamed Sailor V, before refining the concept later with a new lead. 
However, instead of just disregarding this prototype, Takeuchi incorporated Sailor V, or Sailor Venus, into Sailor Moon, albeit in a demoted supporting role as one of Usagi's Sailor Soldiers. The change may have been arbitrary, simply a creator listening to execs about what works for television. Still, keeping both heroines in the series, with lore about them being in a lineage of Sailor Soldiers getting the same offer, inherently raises implications. Do magical girls fall out of favor? Takeuchi likely didn't intend for inferences to be read into such details. I'm so sorry. Urubuchi's deconstruction finds dramatic potential in them, though, connecting dots to the mysterious witches the Sailor Soldiers often fight. I will grant each of you one wish. In exchange for that wish, it will be your duty to fight witches. His series also flips Sailor Moon on a more basic level, by having Madoka weigh Kyuubi's offer for several episodes, instead of just agreeing to it and asking questions later, like Usagi does. While Madoka deliberates, she evaluates her devilish deal as she would a legal agreement. Much like Ozymandias, she does research, interviewing veteran comrades and auditing missions. Effectively, she examines the concept of magical girls herself. Then, again like Ozymandias, she takes a Gordian Knot third option and fundamentally changes her world's nature of conflict. She puts many conditions on Kyuubi's deal, exchanging her life to break the cycle of witches and make magical girls' battles more manageable. I wish I had the power to erase witches before they're born. Every single witch, from the past, present, and future, everywhere. <gasps> Now look, Watchmen and Madoka Magica aren't the first and far from the only time Moore and Urubuchi have used analogs to deconstruct icons of genre. Glass Rider is a harsh view of motorcycle driving tokusatsu heroes like Kamen Rider. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen involves nearly every literary hero and villain in the public domain. One of George R.R. R. Martin's aims for Game of Thrones was to answer deeper questions he'd pondered about Lord of the Rings. Such as, if a fantasy king like Aragorn could survive politics. What was his tax policy? In the 60s and 70s, Hugo-winning author Philip Jose Farmer earned acclaim with novels re-examining pulp heroes, like his biography of Tarzan that made the character more plausible. Farmer's book, in turn, paved the way for Greystroke in 1984, an Oscar-nominated film offering a more grown-up retelling of Tarzan's origins. It was the Batman Begins of its day. Half of me is of Greystoke, the other half is wild. Deconstructionist titles, widely separated by geography and era, all asking similar questions of their genre, as if they're at the same stage of development on Erickson's chart. Of course, unlike human beings, a genre can always go back to its earlier stages. Sailor Moon Crystal, an anime retelling Takeuchi's manga more faithfully, followed the success of Madoka Magica, and The Incredibles re-steps Watchmen-like plot lines in family-friendly fashion. Still, the acclaim enjoyed by the deconstructionist works we've analyzed here demonstrate there are clearly audiences for such explorations. And they span over generations. Far from some awful betrayal of purpose, deconstruction would seem to be a natural part of any adventure genre's growth. But folks, let us know in the comments below of some other examples that would fall under the deconstructionist philosophy. Which stories originally intended for children deserve a more adult conversation, and vice versa? Like and share this video, follow Gamma Ray across the web, and hit that notification button.